Well, thank you so very much, John. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. And I want to firstly thank the Theosophical Society. They do such a wonderful job to bring together so many wonderful people. And, um, and John is the director of uh, the you know, online and in-person uh, programs. He does a fabulous job and uh, want to thank that wonderful introduction um, that he, he made. Um, and also that we have a very exciting evening. We're going to be talking about something very special. And uh, at the root of all of our spirit, at the root of who we are. So, um, but before we do that, as all Native people and Indigenous people do, we create a sacred intention, an intention for the evening, because we don't walk this journey by ourselves. We have our wonderful guides, we have our spirit helpers, we have our our ancestors, we have our our wisdom self. Um, there's we have what the Native people call energetic resources. So we are walking this wonderful earth not by ourselves. We have these wonderful helpers. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about how we can utilize them in the, the um, what we call toyoshpaye. Toyoshpaye means relatives, relationships. Um, and uh, we'll talk a lot about the science of relationships and that it is the center of who we are everything is relationship. So, um, so we're going to talk about that um, and also we're going to set an intention before we start because setting an intention is setting the energy for what we're going to do. And uh, I'd like you to think about um, that we are in a, a circle. It's called the circle of life. And when we teach as Native people, we like to teach in a circle. So what I'd like you to do is just kind of visualize that we're sitting in this beautiful circle um, so that we can share that wonderful wisdom and pass it on to um, whoever it is that has their hearts open to the information. So I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment and I'd like you just to center yourself. And I'd like you to just be in the center of your heart. And I'd like you to do a private intention for your evening while I do one for the group. Usually we have a, a um, smudging, you know, the, the, the four sacreds, the, the sage, cedar, sweet grass, tobacco. And we're going to pretend that we have that in our hands as we set that intention. Wankantanka, Oshimala, O Chetelo, Chetelo. A wonderful creator, thank you so very much for this beautiful day. Thank you for this sacred way of praying. Thank you for this wonderful journey we call life. We invoke for our wisdom self, our higher self, our wonderful spirits in, and our beautiful teachers in spirit, our holy medicine people, all the wonderful beings who assist us in good and loving ways. We thank you so very much for helping us on our wonderful journey we call life. And we ask for you to fill this beautiful lecture with your wonderful wisdom. And bless our families, our, our friends, everyone that we encounter with the beautiful light of enlightenment, of peace and joy and wellness. And that we cover all the topics in such a wonderful way, in a timely way. In full faith, so be it now. A home at Dakwayasan. So I'm going to uh, teach you one Apache word um, because I like to, uh, you know, first of all, um, introduce you to the world of, of the indigenous uh, energy wisdom that we uh, carry for many, many lifetimes, you know. Um, I, and, um, want to teach you this one word, and the word is dagote. So dagote means it's good to see you, and, and it's so wonderful to see you again, um, because we do understand that we have, have, have had many lifetimes. This is not the first time we've met, and, uh, and, but it's, it's wonderful to, to, to acknowledge that in that one word. So we can say that together, it's dagote, ready? Dagote. So it's good to see you again. Good to see you again. And I want to thank Mama Little Wolf for being here. She's my, she's my teacher, but also my, my mother and one of my teachers. And she's retired, so uh, she's handed a lot of all that responsibility over to me. But we want to give her a big hand for being here. So thank you, Mama Little Wolf, for being here. <laughs>
Thank you. So today we're going to talk about finding relationships and letting relationships find you. As I said, my name is Billy Topatate. Topatate means four winds. My other uh, Apache name is Wazayata. Wazayata means wind that sings. And uh, it, it's an interpretation of I, when I, I was taught to speak and to share wisdom. And uh, I have some wonderful books that I have um, created. And um, my new book is available at Barnes & Noble, Audible, and um, at a few other places. Um, but we do have it available today as well. And I'm the founder of MSI Wellness Center. And we do a lot of wonderful things. We want to create a sacred space one person at a time. And we try to do that uh, with our indigenous uh, training. So finding relationships. So people often think that wonderful relationships are a mystery. Or maybe it just happens to other people. And truly, it, wouldn't it be interesting if we found out that there is this energetic science about relationships and that we can create beautiful relationships that bring out the best in us and also we, we bring the best out in others. And did you know that relationships are the basis of all that we interact with? Uh, and yes, we have relationships with trees, animals, plants, crystals, family members, co-workers, and also the most important relationship, and that's the relationship we have with ourself. And the relationship that we have with ourself is the beacon of light that brings forth the energy to us. It's a really interesting thing. My grandfather used to say that, you know, the universe doesn't know the difference between a wish or a worry or whatever is in your aura, because whatever is in your aura is what's going to be brought to you as a, a life lesson. And through the relationships, because relationships are mystical journeys, um, we, we take in a lot from our relationships. And we actually, as we start to work with relationships, we realize that we're really learning a lot about ourselves. And also, it helps us to understand that we can navigate energy. We can navigate energy within our energy field. We can navigate energy within our mind to bring forth um, what it is that we're ex expressing a desire to have. Um, so relationships are like doorways, life doorways, that open up for us. And they really teach us a lot about what we would want as a wellness quality, a happiness quality, a peaceful, or a, a challenge. Um, that we have to encounter for whatever reason. It's important to define um, your personal concerns and fears regarding relationships because these are the patterns in our aura that attract energy. And the life lessons about that are very interesting. And during my medicine, wheel, my medicine woman training, my teacher said, we cannot change what we cannot see. And so with that understanding, that formula of the universe, it's important to clarify what your personal concerns or, or fears are regarding relationships so these energies can be transformed into wellness and happiness. Believe it or not, there are relationship angels. And they're very, very, they're very wonderful. Relationship angels help us to guide us and coach us um, as we progress in our relationships uh, with our, our families, with um, our loved ones, with partners, uh, all of those things. And as a Native per, uh, person, we have uh, this knowing that our spirit guides, our helpers, our teachers in spirit, all, all of that is there for us uh, for one particular reason, evolution. We're, we're really here to really learn 
the deeper aspects of things. And I remember my grandfather saying, I want you to look around the room and whatever you see, just point at it. So I walked around the room and I pointed at things, you know, plants, uh, pictures, and, uh, and, and I finished. And then grandfather said, now I want you to walk around the room and really see it. And what he meant was that sometimes we're walking in the world and looking at things, but not really seeing them. And it's important for us to know that there is a depth in life, that as we start progressing in our relationships, we realize that the person that we're with, whether it's a, a loved one or a companion animal, a friend, um, or someone that we would like as a life partner, we start to realize that they are um, really helping us to learn compassion, understanding, um, wisdom, insight, um, and really start to hear them more and what they're really asking for and, and interacting with um, and what they like and what they don't like and what we like and what we don't like. So it's really a very, relationships are, are the center of who we are. And so, um, when, and it's often helpful for us when we are wanting to create relationships. And even more this year, this year we're becoming more aware that we can administer the qualities of energy through our consciousness for what we're really looking for. And so meditation for us is very, very important because it really helps us to be guided by higher thought. And that's why having quiet moments are really important so that we can have the universe reach out and touch us and also our guides can give us some great insight, uh, which they always do. When, when we really want to hear um, uh, some insights about things, they're, they're more than happy to provide it for us. So the, the science of relationships is really about learning what's truly in uh, our hearts and what we brought into this world to work on. You know, we've all had past lives, we've all had many, many lifetimes, and we do extract from that wonderful tank of all the lifetimes, at least three or four lifetimes to work on in this lifetime. And they all usually have the same flavoring you know, and um, we're wanting to heal something from a past life, and we're also aspiring to do something different in this lifetime. So um, as we progress in our relationships, we realize that we can be a conduit of different qualities uh, that we want in our life, because we are conduits of energy. You know, as we, when we do our ceremonies, we were taught that the energy world is right next to us. And when we are in a quiet place and when we do our ceremonies, that veil is lifted even more so that we can engage and ask questions about this life that we're walking on, on Mother Earth. And many times what happens is people feel that they, they either have to settle for particular relationships or they have to, um, they have to uh, kind of go along by saying, well, maybe there isn't anyone out there that truly understands me, and maybe that's going to be for the rest of my life. Who knows? Um, but truly, you know, in my book, I talk about that words are energy carriers, and our thoughts are energy carriers. Our feelings are energy carriers. They carry energy. When we become aware that our thoughts, our feelings, and our, our actions are carrying an energy that may not be serving us very well, um, we, can, we have the power to change that. We have the power to um, think about and, and express a desire um, to have something, a quality in a person, or 
we would like very much to have an inspiration, a person inspire us. And that has to do with relationships, but it also has to do with what I call social circles. In the native tradition, we believe that all social circles that we are around, we create them and we want them to be challenging us to a certain degree to have an idea that's new or something that we can aspire to. Um, and relationships do that also. When we start to create a scientific or science, uh, energetic science, a pattern, uh, a format that I'm going to talk to you about, um, about what we want in relationships, um, we have to kind of clear the way for that energy to be present. As my mother would say, um, you have to sweep the floor before you mop the floor. Otherwise, if you don't sweep the floor before you mop the floor, you're going to be moving all that stuff all over the place and it takes a longer time to clean the floor. And it's the same thing with relationships. Sometimes we don't even realize that we are operating from a sense of limitations. And uh, when we, we start realizing that our thoughts can open up doorways that will give us things that would feed us in such great ways, we, will, we, we have this, this, this science, this energetic science that we can, that we can use. So respective to relationships, we have to kind of identify what are the blocks and obstacles. You know, my teacher used to, and when I was being trained for being a medicine woman, my teacher said, okay, I want you to look out and see all these people. And I looked out and I said, I'll say, okay, grandfather, I, I'm looking. And he said, do you know that most of these people have the same thought over and over, every day, every week, every year. And therefore, because they're only thinking in those realms um, and having those thoughts in some way over and over and over again, they're creating their future with those thoughts. And I thought, that's fascinating. And he said, okay, so Billy, I want you to have five new thoughts about yourself. And I was 11 years old, and I thought, Grandfather, I can't have five new thoughts about myself. You know, I, I didn't even realize I was having repeated thoughts. And until I looked at everything that was happening to me in my, in my past, and I realized that my thoughts were just repeated. And he gave me this beautiful concept that I can change those things. Therefore, I change my energy field. Therefore, my future changes. And I thought, what a wonderful concept. So, and sometimes those patterns are so old that you don't even realize that they are there. The only way you see them is by looking at what is around your life. You know, so if you're not liking what's going on around you, then you have to use that internal universe, change this. The internal universe really dictates the external universe. So when we think about, um, you know, anything, but tonight we're going to talk about relationships, uh, we want to start to think about what it is that we need to dismantle or dissolve, uh, whatever limitation it is. So there's a, there's a formula to that. And we're going to, first of all, we want to know uh, what is a healthy relationship? So this is a wonderful question, and a healthy relationship are characterized by trust, mutual respect, openness, honesty, and affection. You know, that's, that, is, that is really true. You know, when you, are, when you have these things, it, it feels safe, it feels comfortable, and also helps you to work out things together. 
healthy, uh, empowering, and good relationships bring out the best in us, and we bring out the best in them. And it is also a place where we learn more about ourselves and how to magnify our energy field to attract empowering, responsible people into our lives. You know, I remember when my grandfather said, you know, if you want to learn more, be around people which you can learn from. And, you know, learn from people who will inspire you. Um, so it's important to kind of think about that and write that down on a piece of paper and say, you know, I want to be around, you know, people that, you know, do this or do that or, and find it exciting because it is part of your life's journey to really expand and cast your net wide so that you can really bring in so many things. Now raise your hand if you get excited about going to different places and learning different things that are so good for you. I mean, things that are really, yes, and things that are really very, very empowering. You know, when my grandfather and my teachers were speaking, I never left their side because two words from them changed my whole life. You know, they would say, did you know that this particular plant would, would take tumors away from the body? Try it. And I learned from uh, the plant medicines, from the energy world, how the universe worked. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. But the way it starts is by you expressing a desire to have that in your life. And it takes courage to do the second thing. The second thing is when you invoke for people to expand your mind, to teach you wonderful things that will really bring wellness into your body, mind and spirit, and they come forward, don't close the door. Don't say, I'm not entitled to that, or I'm not, or, or maybe they'll, you know, they, they will, won't share everything with me, or, or maybe, so there's these thoughts um, that we're gonna talk about that it's important for us to, uh, my, as my mother would say, you, you, can't, you don't have the luxury of having a negative thought, you know? And when you do, don't give yourself a public flogging. You know, it's okay. Uh, we're human, we're, we're really learning how to trans transform those things. But, um, but it's important for us to know that, you know, what is it that we're really looking for to allow for happiness to be there? And there is a little voice inside our head that says, oh, but you're not going to get that. Nobody understands you. They're all terrible out there, and they're always going to be terrible. Well, remember, thoughts carry energy. Emotions carry energy. We're closing those doors. Our mind is a very powerful tool. During my training, I learned um, a very special um, uh, training about the mind. The mind according to our stories about the Creator, was gifted to us. Um, and the mind, the consciousness, is not connected to your body. The only way it's connected to your body is by you focusing on what, you know, what I'm saying. But if I was saying something very boring, um, your body could be here, but your consciousness could go to Florida to Universal Studios for an hour, right? And then come right back here. It's true. And so your consciousness is a very powerful tool and it can go anywhere and can do anything. And there are parts of your consciousness that when you say, I am 100% open and receptive to really wonderful people coming into my life. And there's gonna be a little voice that says, oh, that's not true, don't pay attention because you want to open those doors in your mind so those people can come to you, but also that we feel deserving of it. That's really important um, because our energy field is an energy tool. It is structured as a basic operating system that allows for energy to come in and also be directed outward. So we're going to start the healing process by, first of all, step one, acceptance. What you resist will persist. So it's important to acknowledge that 
that there have been some relationship traumas. You know, I'll raise my hand, you know, and you know, it, it's true, right? There have been relationship traumas, but these are stories. They are not who you are. Um, and that is something that you have to believe 100%. Um, and there are they're just things that happened and this will help you to begin your healing process you have to know that whatever traumas we experienced during our journey uh, on this beautiful planet and it could be that we turned on a match and burned our finger or maybe somebody said something to us that wasn't true and all of those things they are not who we are they're, they're things that we're learning. We're learning something, you know, and so we practice every day to change our thoughts and our emotions to what we would like them to be and what you would like to have around you. Um, I like to have a lot of people around me that inspire me, um, that, uh, you know, give me the opportunity to share time because time is very precious. And you um, have you have a principle there's a lot of universal principles but one very clearly that what you give you receive I like to give wisdom and then I get more wisdom when I get more wisdom I share that wisdom and it just goes on and on and on so it's wonderful so um, now when you practice change and I'll show you how to change your thoughts in a little bit when you practice changing your thoughts and your emotions there's this little voice inside of you that says oh, that's ridiculous it, it's not that simple it's it, it's not that simple um, and what you want to do is you always want to make sure that as you progress you'll learn that there are thoughts that you want to give energy to and there are thoughts that you should not give energy to um, and that is so important because where you put your energy, it grows, right? So it's important for us to remember that we can um, believe 100% that we are entitled to a beautiful life and also that we are entitled to wonderful relationships that empower us. And we have to define that for our, our own energy field in the morning as a native person, we start with a sunrise ceremony. A sunrise ceremony is very simple. And what you do is you, when you are just rising, you want to, first of all, give thanks for your life. You know, your life is a very, it's a mystical journey. It's a beautiful journey. And you have a lot of power. You know, you, you, you probably don't realize how much energy and power you have. Like, share a little example my teacher used to say Billy you know dogs have puppies cats have kittens God has godlets that's you <laughs> and you don't know how to use it yet but you're learning you have the power in you it's in everyone um, and the more you use it the more confidence you'll have in it so and it just starts with a thought a feeling and also the courage to accept change because believe it or not it could be good change and you'll say oh no I'm not there you know I've, I've seen it all the time I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about that I go swimming because I like swimming actually I took it because I wanted my husband to do it and uh, that's another story um, <laughs> and so here here's what happened um, the teacher was going she had a birthday so I, I, I had a card and I was gonna give it to her and I I said happy birthday I gave it to her and guess what she did oh you shouldn't have oh that's not oh you didn't need to do that you see how the hands are oh you shouldn't have you sh and what happened is I said okay give it to me <laughs> and so she gave it to me and I took it both hands and I said thank you so very much for this wonderful gift when I use this gift I'm gonna send you a blessing thank you I really appreciate that I said now it's your turn and she said oh, I don't know if I could do that I said give it a go so she grabbed it she goes thank thank you <laughs> thank you very much and it took her so much to say thank you and she was trying to put that hand up and I and I just smiled and, I, and she said, Poor, you know, I don't know why it was so hard. And I said, well, guess what? 
if you can't accept your goodness at this level, you can't imagine what you're not accepting at other levels. And she said, oh, my God. So what happened is I saw her three days later, and she said, I have a story for you. That, that uh, little exercise you did? Well, the next day, I went to my other job, and I got fired. And I said, oh, well, that's interesting. Tell me, tell me what happened. She goes, well, I got fired from that other job. And it's, it's, it's in a place where, you know, uh, retirees are, and they're very wealthy, and they were very upset, but they went to the administration, and they said, nope, she's, you, we have to let her go. But what happened was all of the people who I taught in that center invited me out to lunch. So I went to lunch, and I wasn't going to do it. I was going to say, no, nope, you know, it's okay. But I put my hands down, and I said yes. And... I went to lunch, and I was having lunch with them, and one of the women said, we have something for you. Gave her a card, and she looked at me. She said, Billy, I grabbed the card with both hands, and I said, thank you. And I said, and when I use whatever's in here, I'm going to send you a blessing. And she opened it up, and guess what was in there? $10,000. She said, I never saw $10,000. In my whole life, I never said, I never saw $10,000. She said the tears were just coming down because I never saw $10,000 before. And she said, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. And she said, um, and I told her, I said, well, don't forget your friends, you know. And, uh, and, and so she said, no, I, I won't. And so after that, um, she said the next day, she gets a phone call. It's from the people who fired her, and they said, we need you back. We want to hire, rehire you because we need you. And she said, Billy, I got $10,000, and I got my job. She goes, that's, that's, that's insane. I said, no, that's, that's energy. That's science. You change things and have the courage to accept it. So she was, she was very, and that is an example of changing your thoughts, your emotions. Even if you don't believe it, it still works. So when we look at imagining in our minds what it is that we truly love and want, it's medicine for us. It's self-care for us. So we have an energy worksheet. So I know I didn't tell you to bring a piece of paper and a pen, but if you do have one, please, you know, pull that out. Um, but if you don't, I want you to think about this, and I want you to answer these questions. So the energy worksheet starts with, what are my values and my principles? It's important to write them down. Why is it important to write them down? Because you're crystallizing your thoughts and you're crystallizing that energy into a piece of paper, which is powerful. And you can, you can, you know, if you write your goals and put them away and, you know, and two years later you look at them and you go, wow, I accomplished that. Because you had it in your mind. Your consciousness is very, very important. So what are your values and your principles? And you want to write them down and then the next thing is, what thoughts do I want to change? I want to change that, you know, people are not honest, or people don't like me, or people, you know, um, you know everybody I meet is mean. They don't, uh, everybody that, that I meet is not going, they, they don't like me. I'm not going to, so go on and on. You have to write those down, because you cannot change what you cannot see. So what are your, what thoughts do you want to change? And then what feelings do I want to change? So there's feelings of abandonment or feelings of non-entitlement. You know, same thing like what I, 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 I talked about this woman. She was like, oh no, you don't, have to, you don't have to buy me a birthday card. And I thought, oh my gosh, look at these hands. They were blocking the energy, you know? And um, so what feelings do you want to change? 
And this one's just as important. What images do you, I want to change? There's images in our mind um, that we see about relationships. You know, maybe when we were growing up, you know, maybe when we were first starting in school, you know, all of those patterns really make a difference. And when I'm in stress, what things do I do that take away from my values and principles? Example time. You know, I remember when I was uh, in, in college and I was um, under stress, and I would buy these big world's finest chocolate bars. They're huge. And I would buy a whole bunch of them and put them in my car. Every time I got stressed, I'd no nosh on one. Now, that's not very healthy. You know, and I looked at all these chocolate bars, these world's finest chocolate, which, by the way, they were very good, but, you know, too many, you know. And every time I was stressed, I would, I would eat one, right? That's not very nice that I was doing that to myself. And I finally realized, when I get stressed, I should never do harm to myself, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And I stopped doing that because I mindfully said, this is, if I'm doing it here, where else am I doing it in my life? You know, where el else am I doing it? Obviously, there are other places. So when I'm in stress, what things do I do to take away from my values and my principles? Some people use alcohol, some people do use drugs, and all kinds of things. And these things are not for our higher good. They do not help us. And um, the next question is, when I'm in stress, what things do I want to do that add to my values and principles? Maybe I want to call a friend and, you know, can you talk me off the ledge, please? Can you just do that? You know, or maybe I do journaling, maybe I meditate, maybe I go for a walk in nature. Maybe I do all of those things. Um, and there are many other things. You can ask your guides. Your guides are really wonderful. You can go inward into your heart, and you can ask your guides to take that feeling away from you, or to take that thought away from you, or to take that energy away from you. That's very powerful. And I can tell you, I've, I've done it many times, it works, because your guides are there to help you. Your guides are there to assist you in your beautiful journey. That's their job. And so please utilize them. They're there to help you. And the next and last question is, what inspires me on a daily basis to have a happy and healthy life? When I get up in the morning, I'm excited about, what I, uh, about the day. When I get up in the morning, I'm looking at, look at all the great things you did yesterday and what you're going to be manifesting today because of that. And also, you know, really looking at the day like a canvas that you're going to write on, that you're going to write the things that you want, you know, and also to teach me how to get them and to teach me how to keep them and to inspire them to be more and more in my life. Um, and you've heard people like, I'm lonely, you know, and I'm here and I don't have it. And you can actually, in the morning, invoke for your life's purpose, invoke to know your life's purpose. Um, my teacher, you know, I remember when I watched grandfather, he would do these wonderful things. And I'd say, grandfather, I want to do that. How do I do that? And he said, the first thing you want to do, if you want to do what I do, is invoke for it. Put your hand on your heart, invoke for the universe to help you to achieve it. So I always encourage people to invoke for what they need first. That's the first thing you do. Step two. is release. Step two, identify any and all trauma categories and choose to release them. You can do so by writing them in an invocation, but I do, I'm going to give you an invocation tonight for relationships, so it's very exciting. I want to hear all about them when you uh, use it. You can do so by writing them in an invocation for your wonderful spirit guides and virtuous angels to heal these traumas. 
that you release them into the heavens. So we know that the energy field has a lot of operating systems. But the first one is um, we call them encasements, energetic encasements of trauma. So they come up, you know, they come up when you're taking a shower or when you're driving or, you know, traumas come up and they come up for a reason. Um, the aura says, okay, what are you going to do with this? Um, what do you want to do with it? And most of the time people go, I'm going to shove it right back down, you know? And, you know, just, you know, if you don't pay attention to it, it'll go away. That's not true. You know, so what you want to do is you want to, you want to ask for your guides to take it from you. And, and whenever these traumas come up, any master teacher will tell you, if a, if a trauma comes up, it brings it to the light. And let the light transform it and just keep the wisdom of it. And that's it. You know, so, so your goal is to release it into the light. You know, and just keep the wisdom. Just keep the wisdom. There's always wisdom there. Um, and... My teacher always tells me that, you know, we often talk about our traumas, you know, we often think, we can think about our traumas, we can, and they come up, you know, because they're encasements in our aura. Um, and when they do come up, don't keep them, don't talk about them, just, just allow for them to be released up into the light, you know, and just keep the wisdom, because there's always that, you know, and the wisdom will always um, dismantle the trauma, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I can tell you a lot of stories, but one really brief one is uh, working with this wonderful person, and she was going through a divorce, and she's like, oh, I don't know why, I, I, I'm meditating, I'm asking, you know, you know, what, why did I marry this man who just doesn't have anything to give me, you know, and she was taking a shower, and, and she, go, she, um, she goes, oh, my God. And she called me up. She goes, I, I just got it. I go, oh, what did you get? Well, I said, he doesn't have anything to give me, and I'm very upset about that. But guess what? I, I was in my shower, and I, I don't give very much to myself. So I picked somebody who was just like me, you know, and I didn't like me, <laughs> and I didn't like him. And so I said, so what are you going to change? I'm going to give a lot to myself. I'm going to, I'm going to accept my goodness and accept the goodness of the world. And I didn't say that before. And so there's these realizations that we have, you know, because, you know, it is a very interesting thing. So, so identify any and all trauma <coughs> categories and choose to release them. And you can do so by writing them in an invocation, which I'm going to give you today. And, and, and just uh, release them up to the heavens. Step three, declare in writing or out loud that I accept my own goodness. And I, I accept the goodness of others and I accept and I'm receptive to, a wonderful, to wonderful relationships that bring out the best in me and I bring out the best in them. I truly believe I am 100% deserving of a wonderful relationship in my life, here and now. And I ask for wonderful insights on reformatting my behaviors, feelings, and thoughts for better outcomes within my, within, within my relationships. So when we, remember I said that words carry energy. They do. And so we want very much to, to teach our, our, our conduit our, our aura, we want to teach our aura to be a conduit of energies and qualities that we're looking for. Not maybe necessarily there now, but can be there because you're invoking for them. So you have to remember that. So there are two invocations in my book, and chapter 12 and 13, and I gave you a really nice short version. So the first one is about removing loneliness because lots of times what happens is we have this sense of, of aloneness. You know, we feel like, okay, so better to be alone because than disappointed, you know? Well, it, it happens. So, and the universe 
is not wanting that for you. That's why it hurts so much. Because if it was the right thing, you would feel good about it, right? So the universe does not want that for you. You know, as I said in the beginning, relationships are the center of who we are. We have relationships with everything. You know, it could be a chair, it could be a tree, it could be a person. Um, and the role of those relationships is really to teach us how to be more accepting of the love we can have for ourselves. This is medicine for us. So when we are around people who respect, honor us, love us, um, we thrive in that energy. But most people don't understand that they can invoke for that energy and ask for that energy to come to them um, and have the courage to accept it. So the first, the first invocation is a short version of removing loneliness. And that's really important because when we, um, when we look at our thoughts, they all accumulate to, well, I'm just going to be by myself, or I'll just settle for whatever, and that's going to be enough. Well, that really isn't going to be a good thing. And eventually, it has to change. Because the universe does not want you to settle. So it fragments it eventually as best as you try to keep it. So you want to make sure that you're looking at, you know, the blocks and obstacles and also removing any aspect of loneliness. The second thing is inviting new beautiful relationships in vocation. And the invocation, it's a science. You know, all of the words that we use in our energetic writings, as a medicine woman, I was trained to use invocations to go into the future and learn uh, wonderful qualities that I did not have so that I can integrate them into this, this, um, this existence. Um, and it's very exciting. You can do that too. You are not any different than I am. I just know uh, more because I was trained to do this and my job is to teach you how to do it because the goal is to create a sacred space one person at a time. That's our, that's our tradition, that's our want and desire. So these invocations are, are really going to be very powerful for you and I'm so excited that you're going to use them. And in the book I talk about sharing the writings of a medicine woman, you know, energetic narratives that carry energy will help you not just with relationships, but also to um, connect with your beautiful psychic faculties. Everyone has them. You, you know you have them. You've, you've had those, you know, intuitions before, you know, and your role, of course, is to really develop those skills so remember, you're, you're a godlet, remember? Mm -hmm. And so you are learning how to use your energy and also connecting with your guides through your abilities will help you to have confidence to move forward with their support, you know, with the, the support of these wonderful, wonderful guides that are always around you. You know, this particular place, the Theosophical Society, you know, I used to come here when I was very young, you know, I'm in my 70s now. I, when I was in my teens and 20s, I was, I was coming here. And beautiful um, spirits here, beautiful teachers that have been here um, and still here. Um, and you, you can invoke for them. But your, your spirit guides are always with you. Your teachers have been with you many, many lifetimes. This is not just this lifetime. And you want to utilize them. You want to ask for their help, not just with relationships, but starting here will really help you to see that you have more power than you know. And I'm going to invite you to my birthday. Um, so my birthday is, is March the 29th, and we're just going to be celebrating my birthday in such a great way. Um, and you can, you're welcome to give us a call um, and see, you know, you know, if you can come by just to enjoy the meditation that we're going to be doing. 
which is a meditation called Lighter Than Air to clean the aura. Um, and also to know that Mother Earth um, has very special qualities. Uh, in the beginning of the lecture, I talked about that my grandfather told me, I want you to walk around in the room, and I want you to point at things that you see. And I pointed at, you know, trees, crystals, and then he said, okay, go, go around again and really see them. Really see them. And when I did that, I realized I could be doing this in my life. Throughout the whole day, I could be doing this. Not seeing things, the depth of the things that are around you, the preciousness of all of those things. So, and the, the, um, the meditations, you know, whether you get them from the Theosophical Society or anywhere, are really going to help you to be guided by higher thought. It's all about awareness, mindfulness, and evolution. And your guides will help you with that. And with that, um, I would like very much for you to just take a moment with me and close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you to repeat some powerful words that will really help you on your journey. So I'd like you to know that your breath is very sacred. And it goes into the house of sacred breath, your lungs. So breathe in the breath of life, relatives. Breathe in. And exhale through your mouth. And we're going to do that two more times. And exhale. And one more time, relatives. Breathe in the breath of life. And exhale. And I'd like you to touch your heart. Because when you do that, you, you um, as my grandfather would say, you mean business when you touch your heart. So your goal is to, whether you believe it or not, say these magic words. I accept my own goodness. I accept my, my own, own goodness. goodness. And I accept the goodness of the world. And I accept this wonderful awareness that I can have what I am going to invoke for. I can accept, yes, in full faith, so be it now. Thank you. And you can open your eyes. So when you say those things, your guides are hearing every single word and saying, thank you. Now I can step in, I can help. Um, and you do want to encourage their assistance. And how you encourage their assistance is you say, whenever you're, you're, you say, okay, I really want to know more about relationships, and you get this beautiful thought in your head, that's them. When you, they give you some ideas, insights, say thank you. When you say thank you, you're encouraging your relationship with them, especially with the angels of relationships. Invoke them every day. Ask them to coach you. I want to thank you very much for being with me today. It's a pleasure and an honor.